Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, installing Sitecore Experience Commerce. Um, this is not a step-by-step -step training. This is more of here's some of the things that you should keep in mind when installing it. Uh, some kind of better ways of, of doing the installation so that you can get past uh, the steps that you've completed and then not necessarily have to rerun those steps again, potentially creating new issues as you have to rerun those steps. So as you can see, I've actually got Cycle Commerce running on my local machine. Um, it, it, I actually just completed it last night, um, or maybe it was actually this morning I completed it. Some steps I would like to say that you would you definitely want to know. Uh, first off, I used a guide by uh, Viet, uh, what's his name, uh, Viet Hong. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, my apologies, but I followed this kind of step-by-step -step guide. Uh, I will admit that I found that I had a lot of issues that weren't necessarily found in, he's got it kind of down here at the bottom, um, some kind of, um, you know, these are common errors. Some of these I did have, others I did not. So I think instead of giving you a step-by-step -step kind of guide, uh, because each machine is configured differently, I'm gonna talk about more ways to getting around those issues that you're gonna find. It took me about, uh, probably overall about a day or two. Um, some big gotchas that I can't kind of ran into uh, was the fact that I had previously installed a 9.1 instance on this machine. And now I had to kind of go back and install a 9.02. And there's some uh, challenges I'm gonna talk about here in a, in a second. So I use this as a kind of guide. Uh, the first thing I would recommend is make sure you have prerequisites. He lists out the prerequisites. Just make sure you've got all these installed and running and everything's good to go. And I didn't really run into any major issues. I was running a slightly newer version than he mentions. Um, I was thinking I was running 2.4 of the latest release. So I just got the latest release. Should be good, should be fine. But there could be some unknown errors from that. So once you've got all the prerequisites, the next step is, and he's got a great script. I don't remember where it lists it, but he's got a script that you're going to run. Uh, this is a PowerShell script. And as you'll see, I have it here, actually here. Um, it's got basically a ton of information, a ton of, of uh, you know, values you're going to be basically using. Uh, with a SIF or Sitecore install framework that's specific for commerce. So it's a little different steps that uh, it needs to go through in order to install it. That's basically what you're building here. You're going to basically build a bunch of parameters and you're going to pass it off. If you've used SIF for installing Sitecore 902 or any, any other version of Sitecore, these steps are going to be a lot similar to what you've gone through before. Now, you should make sure that you install 902, assuming you're installing uh, Sitecore XC903, uh, the latest version of it. Uh, it'll probably eventually be a version out for 9.1. But uh, if you're doing that, make sure you have uh, 902 installed. So uh, one of the issues I had, and I think there's, there's actually going to be a few people that have this same sort of issue, is that, and, and there's a... A knowledge base article about this specific issue is if you've installed a 9.1 instance on your machine trying to install 902 will cause a weird issue with certificates um, i'm still not 100 sure why that's an issue probably just the process that's being used in 9.1 to create certs is a little different and creates a a, a different root cert um, than what was previously used in 902 and below uh, well, 902, 901, and 900. Um, so what it, the knowledge base said to do was create this root cert file name. So you just kind of give it a name. Um, what, what I did is I just called it commerce cert, as you see here. Now, that allowed me to get through the installation of 902. Obviously, this is a script I've used several times before. Uh, you're just setting up an XP single on your local uh, machine. So that went pretty smoothly. Once it was ready, then I went over here. Uh, there was a few steps in between. I had to make sure that my Sitecore 902 instance was up and running. 
here again, this is where I had actually some challenges with my local 902. I went to um, clean up the link databases, that went fine. But when I went to rebuild the indexes for my solar instance, um, it was throwing a bunch of random errors. I couldn't figure out why. Turns out I just didn't have enough RAM. Uh, Java, I forgot what it's called. It's uh, where you up the, the space. It's 512 by default. I upped it to two gigs. Um, once I fixed that, then it was fine. And, and I was, you know, smooth sailing after that. So if you're running into issues where you can't rebuild your solar indexes, look into upping the, the, the space. Uh, but like I said, that's very specific to my environment. Uh, probably was also related to the fact that I have lots of instances on this machine. I have probably five to 10 instances. So if you're on a fresh machine, your solar in, or solar databases or solar indexes are very specific to one one instance, so you probably are not going to run into that issue. Um, so once I got 902 installed, um, you're going to run into a bot a lot of solar or a lot of um, certificate issues with the installation of nine uh, cycle or XE as well. Um, what I had to do was actually go into the SIF installation and I had to modify a few things. So um, a lot of the files, a lot of the JSON references that call and kind of build parameters for different parts of the application had a root cert file name. I could not pass this in directly from the the PowerShell script. So I actually had to go in and change a lot of these default values to match the same value I used in the 902 instance install. If you've never installed 9.1, I don't think you're going to run into any of these issues. It's only if you've done a 9.1 and now you're going back to a 902 to install Sitecore Commerce. Um, so once I had this, um, I was pretty much smooth sailing, but I did run into a lot of these issues. I didn't realize I needed to change where and where, where exactly these um, this, this key, where it what files it was in. So this is kind of my secret sauce of what really helped. He mentions it in his article as well, uh, but it's very important to note this. So there is a master single server JSON file. This is the configuration that's, which tells SIF what to install, essentially. So it has a bunch of parameters at the top. Uh, these are all the different parameters you have, but you also have a bunch of tasks. Tasks are what what is it going to run, and they're going to run them in, in the order that they're listed. So, uh, creating by bi create binding is the first thing it's going to run. And as you're running this this um, PowerShell script, it's going to show you a title saying what it's running. So it's going to say install Solar Course. So for example, I actually had an issue with the create binding step. Now that's not a great example, but when it failed here, I basically had to fix the issues. I could see which create binding uh, SXA storefront, create binding uh, JSON file. So I came in here, found a root cert file name, switched it to the the, the value that matches my, my solar or my um, certificate that I used on the 902 instance. And then I was able to run it again. So then it would run. Um, I can't remember how far it got, but it, it basically ran for a while and then it, Air it out on a never task. I think it deploy commerce is probably what it aired out on. Now you're thinking, oh, I gotta, it's, it's failed. Now I gotta go back. It's gotta run all this stuff again. And then it's gotta run this once I figure out what the, the problem was. Uh, that's not actually true. So as you can see, I've commented out a bunch of these. Um, these are not usually typically commented out from the initial installation. This is me com uh, commenting them out as I run. So basically, I I was able to run, I got to deploy commerce engine. There's no point in rerunning all these steps. So you can comment each individual task out. So I could say this one specifically, I could say I can I can toggle the line comment in. So now it's actually a step or a task, or I can uh, comment the line comment again and it's now out and now it won't run that task. Uh, so then the next time I run the PowerShell script, it's going to run and it's going to start with deploy commerce engine. So then it runs for a few more 
maybe fails on deploy site core identity server. Uh, then I comment out all these based off, I can see the log as it's running the PowerShell script to see what step it failed on. And then I comment, comment all ab above it out, and then it will start the next time I run the PowerShell script, it's gonna start with this. So that way you can kind of speed up the installation. If you had to, <laughs> it would suck if you were running this and then it failed on like the last step. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what is the requirements for, like, I know SIF in the early days of SIF, um, it typically rerun everything, but as they've re, uh, kind of built things, what it does now is it kind of removes it and then it builds it. So if it does something like that, then you don't necessarily need to worry about running the entire script again. But if it's, it depends on how it was built. If it's built in a way that, it's going to rerun it without even attempting to see if it was already there um, and deleting it, um, then you know, you're gonna run into potentially some issues because there's gonna be errors saying, oh, it's already there kind of thing. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. And it's actually a pretty good tip for also installing SIF for a regular XP um, product as well. So great thing to keep in mind. Um, so this is kind of going to start off a whole series for me. Um, I, I had a vote out on my uh, YouTube channel to see what people wanted uh, more uh, videos on. And this was a, a one of the top uh, listings. I've been going through the Sitecore uh, XC uh, certification process. I've just gotten to 201 now. Um, I'm going to go back and do some 100 related topics. So I'm going to talk about how to work with inventory, inventory sets, uh, how to deal with pricing, pricing cards, I think is what it's called. Um, and uh, I'm also gonna to go a little bit further uh, once I complete the 200 course and get more, maybe a little bit more into the 300 course. Um, I'm gonna talk about how to create extensions. I think they're called plugins. Uh, there's minions. Um, and I'm really gonna talk about different ways you ex extend Sitecore Commerce. So that concludes today's training on this topic. If you like this topic or you wanna uh, hear more about future topics, please feel free to su subscribe to this channel. Uh, that That is helpful to get the latest information on this, obviously. All right, that's it.